Hi guys, in this lecture, I'm gonna cover Amazon Athena and AWS Glue. And it's also gonna be followed up by a lab where I give you a brief demonstration of each of these products. And they're together because they are closely related, which you'll see as I go through the lesson. Now, these are definitely being covered on the exam in a little bit more regularity. So they're, they're starting to be seen a, a bit more often now in people's exam papers. So it could win you a few points, so it's definitely worth covering. So Amazon Athena is a service which you can use to perform queries on data on S3. So this is a super simple slide here because these are the fundamental pieces of knowledge that you need to know. So we have an S3 data lake, so data sitting on S3, and then we're able to query that data using Athena. And the queries are using the structured query language, SQL. So a bit more background on Athena. It's an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data in S3 using standard SQL. It's serverless and you only pay for the queries that you run. It also uses a managed data catalog. So this is where AWS Glue comes in and the Data Catalog stores information and schemas about the databases and tables that you create for your data that is stored on S3. It uses Presto with standard SQL support and supports a variety of data formats, including CSV, JSON, ORC, Apache Parquet, and Avro. It's also optimized for fast performance with S3. So with Athena, there's no need for complex ETL jobs. So that's extract, transform, and load. Now, ETL is normally where you have heterogeneous databases. Maybe you've got a proprietary database technology. You need to pull some data out of that, so you extract it. You then need to transform it so it's ready to be loaded into a different type of database. So ETL jobs are where you do that extract, transform, and load. Now, with Athena, you don't need to do that. It will actually query the data in place on S3. And therefore, it makes it easy for anyone with standard SQL skill skills to quickly analyze large-scale data sets. So moving on to AWS Glue. So remember, AWS Glue provides that data catalog service. So you have Amazon Athena, and Athena can query data using SQL that's sitting on a data lake on S3. And then Glue is able to also discover that data, transform and prepare it for analytics. So it can perform that ETL function. It will then provide a unified view of the data through the Glue data catalog that Athena and other services can use. So Glue is a fully managed pay-as-you-go ETL service that automates the steps of data preparation for analytics. It will automatically discover and profile data via the data catalog, the Glue data catalog, and recommends and generates the ETL code to transform source data into the target schema. So it runs on a fully managed scale out Apache Spark environment to load your data to its destination. And you simply point Glue to your data stored on AWS and Glue discovers data and stores the associated metadata in the Glue data catalog. And then once it's cataloged, the data is immediately searchable, queryable, and available for ETL. So it works with data lakes on S3, but it also works with data warehouses. So think about Redshift and data stores. So Think about RDS or perhaps a, a database that's running on Amazon EC2. So that's really it for the theory. We now have a lab where I'm gonna take you into the console and I'm going to show you some simple tutorials on how to create some configurations in both Athena and Glue as well. Hi guys, I'm in the AWS Management Console. I'm gonna to go to Services and go down here to Analytics and this is where you can find Athena. Now, once you've logged into Athena, you may see a different screen to me if you've not used it before. I've already gone through a couple of tutorials, so I don't see the splash screen. I just go straight in here to the query editor. Now, actually running queries and creating tables and databases and so on is not something you're gonna to need to know for the exam. So it's going a little bit beyond. And it's also something which I'm not an expert at. So to make it easy for everyone, what I just wanna do is go through this tutorial here. And you'll find this, you'll just click on this tutorial and it actually takes you through a wizard and uses a S3 URL to load some data in. So this is a good way just to have a play around and see what it is, but again, probably beyond the scope of the exam. Really for the exam, you need to understand what these services are and in what context they're used. So let's click on next, and it says it's going to create a table 
and we're going to query some ELB log files. And so the first thing we need to do is define a corresponding table in Athena. So I chose next and now it says choose create a new database. So we've got to create a new database and then type default for the database name. We then need to type ELB underscore logs for the table name. And then I'm just going to copy this S3 URL here. And this is where the data is going to be loaded from. So this is some ELB log data. And we can then choose next on either of these. We now need to choose the data format. It says to use Apache web logs. And then for the regular expression, so this helps to sort of pass the data and understand the format that the data is in. So we can literally just copy that, paste it into here, and then click on next. Now, in this case, you have to fill out the column name so it understands the data and can put it, the data into columns in our database. And we can just click on click here and it will fill those out for us. So you can see it's created all these different columns and you can see what they relate to. So you've got the request timestamp, the name of the ELB, the request IP address, the port, the backend IP and so on. So these will be columns within the database and then the data will get loaded into those columns. So let's choose next. It says you can optionally create a partition for Athena, but right now we don't need to configure partitions for the ELB logs table. So we just choose next, and we can see now that it's created this query. And it says that the above DDL statement for the ELB logs table was generated by the entries in the wizard. And when we choose run query, the table will be created. So I can just close out of this now and choose run. And that's successful. So we now have this table here and we can see the headers that correspond to those columns that are going to be in the table. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click here and choose preview table and that will create another query that selects everything from default and ELB logs. So if I just choose, let's just close that, run query and what we can see now we have a results down here and you can see that information from the elastic load balancer logs. So you can see the different column names that we saw before, the name of the ELB, the request IP, the request port, the backend IP, and so on. So we can see all this information is now being put into this table. And what we could then do is run any SQL queries we want on that data. So that's Amazon Athena. Let's head over now to AWS Glue. So we can find Glue here. I'm going to open it in a new tab and we can see that it already has the ELB logs table which we've just created so this is this is a correct timestamp this is the one that I just created now a few minutes ago as part of this lab and what I want to do is go down to the bottom here and there's a tutorials and I'm going to choose the add crawler tutorial so this says you're asked to analyze arrival data for major air carriers to calculate the popularity of departure airports month over month so you get flights data for the year 2016 in CSV format stored in S3. And then before you transform your data, you catalog its metadata in the Glue data catalog. So let's add the crawler, and that's going to infer metadata from the flight logs in S3 and create a table in your data catalog. So we choose next, and it wants us to call it flights data crawler. I'm just going to make life easy and copy that and make sure I get it all and choose next. For this tutorial, select data stores as the crawler type, so that's the default. Now let's point the crawler to your data, choose the S3 data store. So what I need to do is I need to pull out this S3 URL, make sure you don't get the full stop on the end there. And I'm gonna put that into the path here. So data store is S3, specified path in my account, that should be in another account, and then choose next. And you can add another data store, but we're not going to do that. Now, in this case, for you, you might need to create this role. I've run through this um, tutorial before, so I already have the role. So I can actually come down and just select the role and choose next. And we can run this on demand. Now it says crawlers create tables in your data catalog. Tables are contained in a database. Let's choose or create the flights DB database. So I'm gonna choose that. You add a database, put in the name, and click on create. And we need to enter flights for the prefix for the table and choose next. So that's it, we can then just choose finish and we can then go in and run our crawler. So the crawler is now running. 
So as it says up here, crawler connects to a data store, progresses through a list of classifiers to determine the schema for your data, and then creates metadata tables in your data catalog. So again, a lot of this is beyond the scope of the exam, but it's just to get you into the console and start actually using the service, and that will help you gain a little bit more understanding about what it's all about. Now you can see on the left here, we are concentrating on the data catalog, but then you've got the ETL as well. So this is where you can create those extract, transform, and load jobs. So that completed, and you can have a look at the log files in CloudWatch logs. You can also go to tables, and you can see the flight CSV table. And if you come down to tutorials, if you want to continue, now I'm going to leave it here because I think I've gone a bit too far already. This is just to give you an idea of what these two services can do. But if you want to continue and play around a bit more, you can now go and do the explore table tutorial and this carries on kind of where we left off because it starts exploring that flights CSV table. So go through that step by step and you'll learn a little bit more about AWS Glue.